That is a cool stone. Where did you find that? I found it in my room. You found it in your room. That's cool. I like that. He's got a pretty neat rock here. So where'd she go? Oh, she went back. Okay, so... Um, We've been doing Elijah stories, and uh, we, last week we had this really great, incredible thing where they had the, the challenge on the mountaintop between uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal, and they each prepared an altar, and they each prepared a sacrifice, and they prayed for their God to send fire. Did Baal send fire? Mm-mm. Did the God of Israel, Elijah's God, send fire? Oh, Yeah. And everybody said, the Lord, he's God, the Lord, he's God. And then after that, Elijah prays seven times and rain comes. Now, that is really, really great. Now, after all of that, because Elijah has told the king, get in your chariot, hitch up the horses to the chariot, go to, go to Jezreel, get there before the storm makes the roads impassable because it'll get too muddy. Elijah hitches up his robes and he runs in front of the chariot in front of the horse, 17 miles. Anybody run that far in one time before? Not me. A couple people here have done that. It's a long run. And the king, Ahab, tells his wife, Queen Jezebel, that Elijah has won this great victory and destroyed all the prophets of Baal. They're all dead. And the queen sends a message to Elijah. She says, by this time tomorrow, you're a dead man. Elijah runs some more. And he runs from far up north where Jezreel is. He runs all the way down to the southern border of Israel. And then he crosses into Judah. And he runs through Judah all the way down to its southern border of, border of Beersheba. And he leaves his servant there. And he keeps going another day's journey into the desert. And there's this broom tree or shrub, if you've ever seen them. They're kind of gangly things. And he gets to this broom tree. Do you think he's tired? Yeah. Under the broom tree, out in the desert wilderness, he lays down. God, I've had enough. Just let me die. I'm no better than the people who came before me. A little dramatic. Maybe just a little bit. Any of you guys get dramatic every once in a while? A couple of you admit to it, a couple of you blame your siblings for it, stomp your feet, yell, cry. Guess what Elijah did after his moment of drama? He fell asleep. Do you fall asleep after you're dramatic? No. Oh goodness, I do. I need it after I'm dramatic. So Elijah falls asleep and then... Somebody shakes his shoulder and wakes him up. <gasps> but it's not the assassin sent by the queen. It's God's angel. He says, get up, Elijah, eat. And he sees a cake of bread freshly baked on some hot coals and a jug of water right there for him in the middle of the desert that God has provided. He eats, he drinks, and you know what? He's still tired. So he lies back down and goes to sleep. After he slept some more, the angel shakes him one more time, wakes him up. It's time to eat. He says, Elijah, you need to eat because the journey is too much for you. So what did he do? He ate and he drank again. And the story tells us in the strength of that, those meals, two meals and those two long naps, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights more till they got to the mountain of God. And that's where we're going to pick up the story in a couple more minutes. Will you guys say a prayer with me and you can repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for Elijah. Thank you that he's courageous and strong. And we thank you that we see him sad and tired. just like us. Pour out your spirit on us. 
Amen. Amen. We have worksheets for you, and then you guys are invited to go back to your seats. And we have a special treat that is not in the program, and that is that we have um, Jane Dodson and Tim Shearer coming to share their stories of being... Yeah, that's right. As soon as they're done with their report of annual conference, then we're going to keep, pick up with the Elijah story and see where he goes next. We're going to see what happens at the mountain of God. So thanks for paying attention, Ian. And Eric's, if you would also film this. <clears throat> Good morning. You know, when we were singing Amazing Grace, it reminded me of when we were singing together at conference... There was a, we had a, an organist and some special music course. There were times when uh, he'd drop, her, drop back and uh, uh, we could hear the 1,500 voices singing songs like Ama Amazing Grace or How Great Thou Art. Um, and I wish you could have been in the front to hear you all sing. It was, it was it's, well. <laughs> Our Susquehanna Annual Conference was held at Messiah College Mechanicsburg, June 9th to the 11th. Church delegates and pastors representing our nearly 900 churches of Susquehanna Conference, which is central Pennsylvania, north to south, uh, joined together. And our Bishop Jeremiah Park led us. Not only with the spiritual grace and wisdom that a faith-filled bishop can demonstrate, but also with the warmth and enthusiasm of a joy-filled joy man. Early in the conference, he um, said in a moment of enthusiasm, I want to teach you how to say praise the Lord in Korean. And we're all saying, okay, this will be cool. Take, take something home. He said, okay, ready? Hallelujah. <laughs> we did the same. Um, our first of several worship services during conference was on Thursday afternoon. This opening celebration together with more than 1,500 fellow United Methodists and special musicians, uplifted us and gave us focus to the work ahead to what Bishop Park references as our time of holy conferencing, which is business meeting and spiritual all mixed together in an amazing thing. But indeed, from that starting time, I no longer felt a stranger in the big group. I was among friends and family, and that atmosphere continued through the days as we met and spontaneously talked with folks from all over our conference. We had name tags, big Timothy here uh, on mine, but I would walk up to someone and say, hello, I'm Tim from Christ Church Mountaintop. Where are you from? And that would launch enjoyable conversations between sessions at meals or on the sidewalks between the buildings. It was my pleasure to, for the first time, represent our church family together with Jane and Wesley Mahler, and the theme of our conference was Alive in Christ Together, Creating New Places for New People. And we learned a lot about that. Uh, hopefully we'll talk about some more during the coming year. Uh, fresh places and new things. Uh, in uh, the opening address to We Laity, that's what non-pastors are called, laity, um, we were given a new perspective of we are better together, which emphasizes how much we do and can accomplish in a worldwide United Methodist Church. And in the spirit of Central Pennsylvania, at the end of that session, we were led in a cheering of we are better together. We are better together. Certainly our strength is in our connectional ministry. We can do more, reach more, through our connective churches. We were given reports from several programs that are supported by our shares in ministry. We were also recognized for having given 100% of our shares in ministry this year, which is an amazing accomplishment. These programs that are supported include programs in the Camping and Retreat Ministries, Mission Central, the Committee for Clergy Assistance, the Stewardship Foundation, Connectional Ministry Resources, the Albright Foundation that has facilities for the elderly, the Conference of the Youth Delegation, and the Sierra Leone Project. A report was given and adopted on nominations for cabinets and positions at the conference level. 
In this nomination's report was the retirement, but really reappointment, of our current district superintendent, Tom Salzgiver, who will serve as the director of Connectional Ministries, as well as chairman of conference staff. Our new superintendent will be Larry Leland, beginning July 1st. Mr. Reverend Leland has been serving in a church in Montoursville, and he also serves as the secretary of the annual conference. Also from the nominations committee, our own JP was placed on the um, finance committee, so he'll be developing the budget that we get to argue over next year. <laughs> Yes, um, our conference of how many churches? Um, how many churches? Uh, 600? Uh, I don't know. 900, yeah, 900, that's right. Nearly 900 churches, that's right. Good for you. <laughs> well, uh, money is serious business, and we did get, give out time to that. The conference budget discussion and presentation um, spawned questions, some debates, recommendations, resolutions. Any of us attending had the right to speak briefly by approaching one of the numbered microphones and then waiting our turn to be recognized by the bishop. Uh, these spontaneous interchanges were interesting and even though opposing viewpoints were always presented, good spirit and inclusiveness did prevail. Resolutions and proposed changes are always voted on by parliamentary procedures. And as I mentioned, there are several worship services during conference. In addition to our opening worship, there was a recognition of retiring clergy, a memorial service for those who had passed on since our last annual conference. Um, it was a special time for me. Um, my Uncle Dan was one of those folks. He was 99 when he died this year and had served 47 years as a pastor and some other things and had served as a United Brethren, an Evangelical United Brethren and United Methodist. And I um, sat with some of his family and sat next to my dad. And it was a special time for us. Uh, he said to me, this is, this, he said, turned to me and said, this is a special moment for me, Tim, to sit with you at annual conference. Probably he's remembering what I was like as a teenager. <laughs> Just goes to show, God works mysteriously and powerfully. Um, there was also a celebration of ministry for those getting ready to be ordained as deacons and elders. So recently, the uh, United Methodist General Conference was held in May with worldwide representation. Uh, we received a report of our conference delegates. Uh, there were about 20 people who went and it's, had invested months of meeting time beforehand to get ready to deal with all the things that needed to be dealt with, um, including a major one that you may have heard about in the news and continues on, and that is dealing with uh, human sexuality um, and our denomination's perspective on that. It got a lot of time and debate and discussion, and it reached a point where they could not come to conclusions and agreements, so the Council of Bishops um, decided to appoint a special commission to meet urgently. Uh, but, you know, throughout everything, it's prayerfully trying to discern God's will, not be hasty, not, you know, try to do the right thing. So they are appointing a special commission to meet and discuss and prayerfully bring back and perhaps have a special general conference soon, uh, but to uh, try to take a position on this that is a discernment of God's will and, and keep our church in unity. And that is an important thing. Uh, one of the, as we work through the business of the church and as we work through the business of our church and we, we think about what should we do, what should we be doing, uh, we don't want to be distracted, divided. And I just want to read a couple of words from Bishop Park to that theme. Every day we received uh, a special daily link, which was what's going on today in conference. We got when we got there to kind of tell us what's going to happen. And then each day we got a uh, print out the, the report of the, the reports and some other things. But this was a statement from Bishop Park about the general conference. I'm just going to read two paragraphs. Dear United Methodists of the Susquehanna Conference, grace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Prince of Peace, 
healer of our brokenness, and hope of the world. The 2016 General Conference met with the theme, Therefore Go. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we were refreshingly reminded of the charge given to us from the Lord who has all the authority in heaven and on earth. Go and make disciples of all nations for the transformation of the world. Now the question still to be answered is, where to go from here as the United Methodist Church? The destiny of our beloved church is at stake with the discernment and decisions yet to be made by our church. Ultimately, the way forward in unity depends on who's in charge. Are we willing to let go and let God? In the meantime, we cannot afford losing our perspective and being distracted. The mission of the church is clear. We are to kin continue to give our best ever more faithfully to making disciples and transforming our communities and the world. Every year when I go to conference, there's one little thing that I take away that sticks with me. And this year at annual conference, we had the opportunity to witness a man who had been on America's Got Talent in 2012 perform sand art. He did this sand art and he did amazing pictures in the sand of the prodigal son, um, the passion of the Christ, and the creation story. His name is Joe Castillo, and if you want to see any of these amazing things, they're on YouTube, and you could see either me or Tim or JP on how to do it. I made my husband look at them the next day. They're so amazing. And on a personal note, I want to say that at this annual conference, I had the personal pleasure of, of being present when my son was recognized as receiving his license as a local pastor and as being a certified candidate in the ordination process. What Tim and I have talked about glosses over a lot of issues that took days to complete and can't possibly cover the atmosphere that goes on, the people that meet as strangers, that become acquaintances, that later become friends. In July, our jurisdictional conference will be held. This is the conference where bishops are set for the next four years. Our Bishop Park has served our conference for four years and is up for renewal. Please keep him in your prayers, keep our conference in your prayers, and keep the jurisdictional conference in your prayers. It's been my pleasure to serve along with Tim and Wesley and to represent you. I look forward, hopefully, to attending next year when it will be held in May at the Hershey Lodge. Thank you. Thank you, Tim and Jane. Yeah, Messiah College is tearing down the building where we've been meeting in order to build something, you know, a build, bigger barn. And so um, we're going to be at Hershey Lodge instead of college dormitories, um, which, what's that? I could not hear you with personal bathrooms, which is, which is a nice upgrade. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Um, we also, uh, hopefully, getting uh, Bishop Park back, we'll have him speak uh, here in worship in November. So we're looking forward to that um, with the anticipation, of course, that he will be uh, back serving our annual conference for the next four years. Let's pray together. Lord, again, we're thankful for this, for this church for all the variety and interests that are represented here in this room right now, for the way you've touched each of our lives. We're thankful for the ways we are connected in something larger and bigger that's part of your kingdom and impacts the world. We pray for the leadership of our annual conference. We pray for the leadership of our global United Methodist Church. We pray for the processes that are ahead, for the divisive issues that we are working through and new ones that will come along. We pray that we will find ways to live in the unity of the Holy Spirit and the bond of peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Nancy, share our, our next scripture with us. And Ian, this follows up with that story. It picks right up with what's happening at the mountain of God with Elijah. Okay. Our scripture is from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 18. 
And there he came to a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been jealous, I have I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance to the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. And Yehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphat of Abel Mahola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And him who escapes from the sword of Hazel shall Hazu slay. And him who escapes from the sword of Hazu shall Elijah slay. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God. 